Good morning, dear friends. We are gathered here. We gathered to, to celebrate this Mass. And so, Mass is going to be offered for all of you. Prayers are going to be offered for you and for your families. And I invite you to bring your intentions to God's altar this morning. And let us pray together and ask His mercy and His blessings. We pray for all the many intentions we carry in our hearts every day. Pray for people who have died at this time. And pray for their families that God may help them find rest. Pray also for those who are sick, critically sick, that the healing graces of God be granted to them through our Blessed Mother's intentions and intercessions. We pray for an end to this virus, that medical researchers who are working hard may come with something sooner to help us combat this virus. And finally, we pray for people who have lost their jobs, those who are looking for jobs at this time, those who are struggling with caring for their families. May God help provide for us in ways only God can. So we begin this Mass with the opening hymn, Table of Plenty. to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty, God will provide for all that we need, here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good morning, dear friends, and good afternoon from wherever you are joining us from at this time. I want you to remember this, that I pray for you guys every time I lift up my heart to God. And I believe that God is doing something about your situation. I believe that. As the readings tell me, uh, as I read scripture this time, I read scripture in the light of everything that we're dealing with. And scripture speaking directly to our events and the moments and the experiences of every one of us. It tells me that God is, God has us, you know, in his presence. God has our concerns in his presence. So we lift our hearts in praise and thanks to God who hears us. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, to celebrate this Mass, let us call our Blessed Mother to be with us, to ask forgiveness for our sins, and to bring our concerns before her Son. Dear Mother Mary, we plead our cause before your son every day. Bring our consents before him today. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Dear Mother Mary, your sons and daughters are dying and then I'm sure that breaks your heart. Help them find rest with your son. Christ have mercy. Dear Mother Mary, you know exactly what it means for one's life to be in danger. We beg you, may your protection be with your children and their families at this time. We beg you. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the font 
of baptism have made new those who believe in me. Keep safe those reborn in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully persevere and preserve the grace of your blessings. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. first reading today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydda. There he found a man named Enos, who had been confirmed, confined to bed for eight years. For he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Enos, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once. All and all the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon saw him and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated into his Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and alms giving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the, up, to the room upstairs where all the windows, where all the windows came up with where all the widows came up with him and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. When he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist. Hallelujah. How shall I make a return to the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise and I will call upon the name of the Lord hallelujah my vows to the Lord I will repay in the presence of all his people precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones hallelujah Lord I am your servant I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Be with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he 
he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, gives life, and the flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the one who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect with you this morning from, or this afternoon, from the first reading and the song. This reading, there's a lot to share from the gospel reading, but I'm sure we would have this reading at another time. The first reading opens with, the church through all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. Was at peace. Now, what that says to me is there had been chaos and confusion, and there had been uncertainty. Preceding this, there had been all of those things. You remember there was persecution broke out in the church in Jerusalem and all the surrounding region. And so the church had to go under. Church went under where masses and celebrations or services were held in people's homes, were held underneath, you know, some hidden places. Yeah, the church did all of that for fear. In, in a, yesterday, what we heard was how all, all the, entire, the entire place, everybody had to just like run for their, 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 their lives. Only the apostles, sorry, that was two days ago. Only the apostles stayed in Jerusalem. Now, post maybe whatever time it took, three months, four months, one year, we're not sure. However, at this time, it is reported that the church throughout all Judea, Galilee and Samaria was at peace. Now, what that says to me is that this situation isn't going to be forever. This situation isn't going to be forever. That gives me a lot of hope that sooner than later, I know God has an appointed time for all of this to come to an end. I wish he had given us an idea that God has an appointed time when all of this will come to an end. When we will be able, the church and society and everyone will be able to break the bread of peace. And wow, I can't believe we are back to life again. Yes, we will be back to life again because as I often say, Everything temporal does have an expiration date. Everything temporal has an expiration date. You may not be signed on it just like the thing we buy. There is an expiration. And everything temporal has an expiration. This moment also has an expiration. God knows it. We may not know it. But we must continue until we get to the expiration. We will survive this time and this moment. And so scripture says, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up. Now, this is not just the church alone. It's also 
people's businesses, it's also people's lives, it's also people's relationships, it's also, just name it. All of that was being built up. So, when, it, when, when all of this is over, yeah, that will be the period of building up. God is definitely going to help us build up, not build down. I believe that. So scripture says, she, that's the church, and every activity that fed the church and sustained the church, people's lives, people's families, people's businesses, everything, society itself, was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. Now, that's what, that's a part, I don't know. I hope we will. Because for God to sustain us after all of this process of cleansing, I call it the process of cleansing and purification, the process where God is refocusing our minds and our lives and help us, help, helping us reprioritize our values and the things that matter to us. When the church, the early church, had gone through all of that, Scripture says she was built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and in the consolation. Now, get it? So these are two things, all right? When we walk in the fear of the Lord, when we allow our values to be determined by what God wants, God gives us, there is a reward for that. We get the consolation of the Spirit. We get the comforting of the Spirit. We get the Spirit with us who is the source of our joy, our fulfillment, our contentment, and our happiness. So my hope, this, this, this thought part of it, I cannot guarantee, but I hope that we have learned the lesson. Because if we did not learn the lesson to change our values and make our values more oriented towards human life and humanity, than profiteering and everything else that has created created a society of almost like of demons, so to say, and vultures. I hope that we will be able to orient our values to the service of human beings. And that is beginning from the moment of conception when a child is conceived in, his, in her mother's womb to the moment of death when our seniors are given the dignity and the dignity and respect they deserve because thanks to them we have everything that we have today but for their labors and sacrifices you and i may not be here so we must be able to respect and reorient our lives our spirituality our economies our education everything to the service and to the priority God is given to humanity and to human life. And I hope that's what we learn. So when we are able to orient our lives in the fear of the Lord, the Bible says there will be the consolation of the Spirit. But the consolation of the Spirit will be missing if we fail to get the lesson that has orients us to the fear of God. So that's the first point I want to make from the first reading. And I pray that you and I as individuals, because change doesn't just happen, change begins when one person chooses to change the way they behave. When one person chooses to not do one more bad thing, that's how change happens. And it happens for the worse or for the better. So I hope that this moment allowed us enough time to think, to reflect, to meditate on how we treat each other, how we behave towards each other. And how we behave in the family of God. In the, the, the psalm, the psalm, um, for me, recaptures an attitude that, or oh, an emotion that is so essential for human thriving, for human happiness, for contentment. An emotion that is so central for feeling fulfilled in life and for getting the most out of relationships, just name anything, out of life itself. There is, there we have any number of emotions, but there are some very, very essential emotions. And now this emotion, for instance, is not something that just 
happens. You are not, it's not something that is given. It's not a given. You work for it. You develop it. You build it. You work on it. You make it part of your second nature. If you truly want to be happy. Happiness, yes, it is a desire of every human heart. Joy, happiness. These are the desires of every human heart. Yeah, but they don't just happen. We work and build the building block for happiness. And the emotion I want to talk about here is the bedrock, the background, you know, it's a foundation for a happy life, for a life of true contentment. And, and see what David said in the song. David recognized. Now, David's life wasn't an easy life. He had a lot of stuff going on in his life. He says he had to stop at some point and calculated everything that God has blessed him with. Don't forget, you know, Psalm 139, David looked at himself. He says, he looked at himself. He says, wow, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for I am so wonderfully made. So, he was always aware of the blessings of God in his life. And that put him in the mindset of gratitude and thankfulness. So awareness of what we have received, of how we have been blessed, puts us in a mindset of gratitude and thankfulness. And lack of awareness of what we have received and what we have, what life has blessed us with will put us in a mindset of ingratitude and sometimes complaining and anger and indifference and everything else that puts us in a very poor frame of mind. And so David says here, how can I make a return to you, Lord? So how can I thank you enough, God, for all the good that you have done to me? How can I thank you? For all the good. So here is one who is aware of the blessings God has given. Now in spite of everything else that is happening, David is able to focus on the good things that God has done in his life. Was everything perfect? No. But he realized that there were still outstanding and wonderful and amazing things. And he wanted to begin to thank God for all of those things. That means put himself in a place where God can begin to do more. A few days ago, I remember I quoted the saying of Jesus. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be granted unto you. Seeking first the kingdom of, of God is an awareness that God, you've done enough already. All I care about is to see how best I can be part of what you have done. And when we are able to do that, and unless we are grateful, and unless we are thankful, that becomes difficult or impossible. So David goes on, he says, the cup of salvation now. David is not thinking about what God will do in excess or do more. God has done all already. He is now thinking about how he can do back. Gratitude means me recognizing what you have done and reaching back to show appreciation. Now, for some of us, Showing appreciation and being grateful ends with thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whether or not it comes from the heart. Whether or not. But gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is behavior. Gratitude is not a word. It's not spoken. It's demonstrated. It's shown. So, so if you say thank you, I'm grateful. And I look at your behavior and I look at your attitude. And I see that it doesn't sink. It just doesn't rhyme. Then that means you're not grateful. So gratitude is an attitude. It's a behavior. We have to develop it. And David goes on. He says, My vows to the Lord I will fulfill in the presence of your people. Precious in your eyes is the death of your faithful. I am your servant, O Lord. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord. I will offer a sacrifice. That means I will set something aside that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it for the sole purpose of showing gratitude 
Whatever it is that I have, I'm setting aside, I'm going to set this aside and I'm doing it for the sole purpose of being grateful, to show gratitude. Now there are so many of us who struggle with being grateful and to overcome in gratitude in your life because you can never be happy as an ungrateful person. It's impossible. Happiness comes with you feeling content that people are doing enough for you and you taking responsibility for what you have to do in return. And on, until you are able to get to that point, it is going to be very hard to be happy. It's going to be very hard to be joyful. It's going to be very hard to be graceful. And I'm going to quickly run through three things that we must, three attitudes, negative attitudes that we must overcome if we want to be truly grateful, if we want to be truly thankful. First, we must overcome the never enough attitude. For some of us, we never have enough. So if your husband does something, it's not enough. If your wife does something, it's never enough. If your child does something, it's never enough. If anyone does something, the government does something, it's never enough. If the Pope does something, it's never enough. So it's never enough. So no one can ever meet your expectations because it's never enough. Sometimes even when you do something, it's still never enough. And so you put yourself in a, in a mindset where you're always going to have something to complain about because no one would ever be able to do, not even God in his magnificence would be able to do enough for you. So you must overcome that. Ask yourself, what about me makes me think that what people do for me is never enough? What about me? What is, what is it in me that needs to be fixed? Because something is not okay if I don't think what people do for me is enough. So I must fight to overcome the never enough attitude. The second thing I want to think, I want us to, you, you, you may need to fight is the attitude that you deserve it. Now, there are so many of us who were born into families where, I wasn't one of them, but born into families where the whole world was built around you. It's almost like your whole family was living for you. Mom, dad, everyone, aunt, and grandma, grandpa was living for you. You were everything. So you may grow with that mindset where you think you deserve everything you deserve. And then you were fortunate to be born in the greatest country in the world. So you deserve everything. Now, that mindset would also set us for failure. It would set us for a miserable and depressed life. Why? Because everything, everything that happens to me, why would I be grateful for something I know belongs to me or I deserve? No. So I must fight that mindset that I'm blessed, that I have all of the things. I have a family that gave me everything, people that love me. I am blessed. And that awareness should make you begin to be grateful for the fact that you were chosen to have that life. You don't deserve it. No one deserves it. It is a gift. And unless I begin to see what my parents have done for me, what everyone has done for me as a gift, not something I deserve, it's less likely that I'm going to be grateful. Who is ever going to be grateful for what they deserve, what they have earned? No one. At best, you will thank yourself. You will beat your own chest and say, yes, I deserve it. But no one else. So that is an attitude that we must overcome. Now, if you also want to overcome on ingratitude and unthankfulness, you must overcome the me first mindset where everything has to be about you. Everything has to be about you. And, and you don't care about anyone else. What anyone else cares about doesn't matter in the house. It has to be what you care about that matters. When you make it all about you, then it's impossible for you to ever be grateful about the little things that happen in life. The person that cleans your streets, the person that cuts your grasses or your shops, the person that serves your food. You're never gonna see that. Your doctors, your teachers, you're never gonna see that. The government, the church, you're never gonna see that. Your husband, your spouse, or your, your, your friend, you're never gonna see anything else except you because you are too large to be able to see anyone. So I pray, dear friends, that we may be able 
and with a with mindset of gratitude, you can survive anything. Believe me, with a mindset of gratitude, you can survive any situation. Even this one, you can survive it. You can thrive through anything that comes your way with a mindset of gratitude and thankfulness. And I pray that God will help us to develop a grateful mind and a grateful heart. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we just want to thank you. We know all of this will come to an end one day. We know you have that date already spelled out and written down. We ask, dear God, that you help us to do what needs to be done every day until that day dawns on us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have prayed. We pray, dear God, for an attitude of gratitude and gratefulness for everything that life is bestowed on us, for the blessings of our lives, for the gift of each of us, for the gift of the many freedoms and favors and things we get. We have not deserved any one of them. They are your gift to us. Help us, O oh God, to be grateful for what we have. Even the intellect and the abilities we have done, they are give to us. Help us, O oh God, to thank you every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray for all those who are in critical care. That God may help them to find healing quickly and to come off those ventilators. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers who are working every day to help us care for our sick. We pray for our delivery people. Pray for restaurants that are functioning right now and feeding people for free. Pray for generous people who are sacrificing everything that they can to make our society work for, the, for others. That God may bless their hearts. That God may bless their resources. And that God may give them every good gift from on high. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dead. Pray especially for people that we know at this time. That God may grant them forgiveness, rest, and peace. And pray for their loved ones. That God may give them comfort and healing at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I bring your own intentions to God at this time and ask that God, who cares about us, may make you realize how much he cares about you better than you could ever imagine and how much he takes your prayers seriously every day. Dear God, hear the prayers of your people, wherever they are worshiping from at this time. I beg you, dear God, that they may feel the power of your peace and your presence right now, even as we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We end by asking our Blessed Mother to pray with us and for us as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy toward us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our own Jesus. O clement, so loving, so sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Amen. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite heart, O Son of God. Let us pray. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, 
they may never lose what they have received. But attain the gift that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they did before, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit.
and give thanks from me to all of you in your family. Peace be with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be free. Dear God, this is a difficult time for the church. We pray that the day will come very soon when your people everywhere can receive you physically in your body. And in your blood. But until then we ask, O oh God, that your angels may bring this nourishment to their homes and to their lives. That they may feel the power of its effect in every area of their lives. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment and express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass and for celebrating God's love with us. Pray that you may feel the love and the mercy and the kindness of God. So always, I'd like to end everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loved you very much, but is madly in love with you. And I hope you can feel that love in your heart. For our closing hymn, we're going to sing the song, Now Thanking All Our God. And thank we all our God. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, Aunt Natalicious, and Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now thank we all our God. With hearts on hands and voices, who wondrous things had done, in whom his war rejoices, who from our mother's arm has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours. Who made his bounteous God through all our lively years with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this wall and then.